Hey everybody, I'm Tim here with Drew Estates Liga Pravada Nasty Fritas. And you're watching Cigars Daily. I want to invite you to get more out of this and all our videos now when you watch them on CigarsDailyPlus.com where you can even leave your rating for cigars right next to mine under each review video. People ask me all the time about cigars that I hate. I think there's something where people just want to hear me knock a cigar and say that it's terrible, it's got an awful taste, the brand is horrible, or whatever. And truly, I avoid that question because at Cigars Daily, we really only carry brands we believe in, so at least we don't even have any cigars here that we hate, and the ones that we don't like out there, we just typically don't talk about. But there's one cigar that drives me up one wall and down the other, and it's this ridiculousness right here. Drew Estate. Liga Pravada Nasty Fritas. This thing has made me crazy since the first time I saw it, and not because it's like a particularly bad cigar. It's a Liga Pravada, a line that I have a great deal of respect for and enjoy them when I smoke them, although I'll admit I smoke this less than absolutely any of them because it's just such a peculiar little stick. It's like Jonathan Drew sat down and said, hey, you know what would be a good shape for cigar? A prison shank. Because this thing is not a regular Parejo, not a regular cylindrical cigar and it's not a traditional figurado. It's basically like a little icicle hanging from your garage in the winter. It comes to a point at one end and this is the one that I see people like cutting this end and lighting it, like drawing from this end the most because people don't even know how to light this thing and smoke it. But today I want to take this through the review on the whole thing. I want to see if this little weird thing can pop out as much flavor as everybody's come to expect from Liga Pravada cigars and the only way to find out is with a cut and a light. Also, this does have a very tightly closed foot on it, so when you get a closed foot cigar, you want to watch for a tight draw as you light. That will typically go away, but also you don't want to toast the foot, so I'm just going to light right in. So right here at Light Up, I get two really powerful notes coming out of this cigar, which by the way, smokes like a chimney. It's crazy. This is Drew Estate's thing. Their cigars just produce like unreal amounts of smoke. And at the same time, flavor on this got two real notes black coffee and leather, both very much present, very evenly balanced out front. They're the two bulldogs of the taste right now. There's not a whole lot else going on. And if there was, you wouldn't notice it, except for a little bit of spice on the back of the tongue that's actually complimenting nice what is a very strong cigar, especially for the light up. So I want to take this down to the first third and see what it gives us. Okay. Here we are. I'm in my smoke factory here, and this thing is pumping out more flavor and better balance as I get almost an inch into it. First of all, in addition to that coffee and leather, a sweetness has come into this. Still spice on the tongue in the back of the throat and plenty of strength, and again, lots of smoke production, but this flavor has given me more and a more well-rounded experience. There's a little bit of a cinnamon note sort of tagging along. It's the only thing at this point that's not quite in balance with everything else there is to taste. If you were looking for a cigar that was a shorter smoke, that was powerful, this at least is providing that and right now, but I don't know what to expect going forward. The thing tapers off and gets so narrow as it goes toward the final third that, that A, I'm worried about it overheating, so I'm going to be paying attention to that, and I don't know if I should expect, like, transitions on this or what, so let's jump into the second third and see where this takes us. Well, there went that big heavy ash as I sort of expected. And in all fairness, while I was smoking it, I was kind of holding it up and down like this. Oh my gosh, there's so much ash all over me right now. So this thing has had really nice performance going into the second third. Total surprise to me because I didn't expect it at all. I'm getting a better balance of flavor here and that sweetness is really on a nice kick right now. Sweetness is almost out front in front of coffee and leather and that's giving me an overall profile that I enjoy a lot more. Even spiciness has fallen away. At this point, I would almost call it a creamy flavor although it is really quite robust and dark for such a full strength cigar. 
And this thing has given me good stuff to chew on and a construction that's not like anything to complain about. I certainly thought construction would be an issue for this oddball size. Now take a look at the wrapper on this with me. So for looks, this thing is already kind of odd, but it has a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper that gives it this really rugged look. I guess that's the nasty part of the Nasty Fritas. There's really thick veins on this that are twisty and turny and curvy and all that stuff. But for a rugged looking cigar, that's definitely what you get on flavor as well. And it's got that Nasty Fritas footband that you'll take off almost as soon as you light it up. And with a nice closed foot on it, I think the cigar did give an experience that was a above and beyond what I expected for this thing. And so now I wanna see what this does as we taper off into that final third. This is that part where I'm really nervous I'm gonna get heat or, I don't know, some unpleasant thing. So let's jump into the final third and see where this takes us and what kind of score it gets. Okay, so I'm here at the little nubby nub, and I will say, this thing is starting to burn my fingers a little bit. The actual wrapper leaf is getting hot on the outside. I'm having trouble even pinching it. I just gotta pinch it with like my fingernails here so I don't burn myself. At the same time, the flavor on this it's really got me surprised. So much of the profile has hung on here into the final little bit. Coffee, leather, even the sweetness in this still very present. Spice in the back of the throat. Like the whole flavor package is still intact and I'm getting all of it with every draw. That's an impressive point. And even the smoke isn't getting hot while the actual nub of the cigar heats up itself. That is not something I see very often. And for a cigar that honestly, I had low expectations going into this. I didn't expect this thing to have good like performance for construction. I didn't expect flavor to do a whole lot. It really has given me so much of that flavor right up until the very end. There were no tr like transitions or turns of flavor and that flavor is very simple. It's very dark flavor notes. It's full strength and almost one dimensional but really robust for what I did get. My final smoking time on this has been 41 minutes and my score came out to an 85. If you're looking for a Liga Pravada that's under like seven bucks a stick, you're gonna find a lot going on with the Nasty Fritas in a cigar that I've always walked by on the shelf and looked at and judged and was like, what a weird looking cigar. Has been much better than I thought it was gonna be. Just another time and way that the cigar industry has surprised me. But of course here, what really matters and what we all care about is what you guys think about this. So if you've had Liga Pravada Nasty Fritas, drop a comment down below and let everybody know what you think Think of it because we'll all learn better when we learn together and check out this video on cigarsdailyplus.com where you can leave your rating of this cigar right next to mine under the review video thank you all so much for watching this is tim signing off for cigars daily and i will see you in the comments